Welcome to the San Clemente Podcast, the only local podcast in the best beach town in the world. We're here to bring you weekly episodes highlighting everything from sports, culture, entertainment, politics, and everything else this place has to offer. Welcome to the San Clemente Podcast, the fastest growing podcast in all of Orange County, California. Today, my co-host and I, Brian De La Puente, have a very special guest in the house, a local legend, someone that is very impactful to our entire community here in San Clemente, a surf coach at our schools, someone that makes a very big impact and difference in the kids' lives growing up, John Dow. John, welcome to the podcast. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Your look at surfing, which is the main San Clemente's identity, you've had a backstage pass for 20 years almost. That's crazy. The stories, we're just going to scratch the surface, but we, that's what we're after. We just want to shine a light on these, these figures in town that, that want, we want to keep these stories going and these, these kind of legends. Um, so our kids kind of know some of that. So, well, and that's so true, right? The kids have such a narrow, vision of what their what our community is right they they don't know the history they don't run they run into certain people are like who are you right they don't know who you are but in reality they've had a really big big impact leading up to that yeah um and that that history and that that lineage is super important and that's that's why we're all raising our kids in this town that's why we're here and 100 i I literally bought the house across the street from where i grew up like i didn't go far (laughs) no no exactly and again, that's where we were super passionate about starting this, right? We're like, we care so much about this city oh, and about our town, but there, like, there's not many people, right? That yeah. have been like, that were born here, raised here, that are now fortunate enough to raise their kids here. Right. And we're like, we have to keep this going. 100%. Yes. We have to like, keep yeah. this going. It's a unique dynamic that yeah. we all have and yeah. we, we want to continue that and mm-hmm. everybody's connected or one degree of connection. And yeah, yeah the more yeah. you talk to people, it's like, whoa, like this, this is a special, special sure. thing. For sure. That's our main goal. Yeah. yeah. Probably the best place in my, actually not probably for sure the best place in the world. Yeah. Right. I mean, yeah, no, for are, sure. yeah, of course you, you can go all sorts of places and you love it, but yeah. you get to come back to paradise. Yeah. You get to come back and you get to live yeah. your day to day life. Right. Like, we went on vacation to the beach every day. Yeah. And the day we got home, what did we do? We loaded the golf cart and went to the beach. Yeah, right? Absolutely. It's just, yeah. We live in a vacation. Yeah, we yes. do. It's and rad. that's why when you go on vacation, anytime you get to come home, you're happy. You're okay with it. Right. You know how many people out there are on vacation and have to go home and they're like, oh, I got to go back to Missouri. Or, sure. <laughs> you know, it's not to throw them. But where, you know, wherever it is, mid, right? We go back to a, a grind that, yeah. I promise you're not going back to a city like San Clemente. <laughs> you're just not. You're right? not. Yeah. And again, the amount of people here that are influential, that have been influential to us and have good stories are just, it's countless. Yes. And that's why we're like, we have to get this going. There's too many gems. There's too many untold stories of great people here. Yeah. No. Let's, let's share their stories. Right. Mm-hmm. Especially let's before that. There. Yeah. Especially before that generation is gone. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because those generations are, are disappearing. You know, I had... I had a neighbor on Esplanade, right? And they just sold the house this last last week, lived in this town for over 60 years, yeah. came here from Italy, right? Mm-hmm. Like yeah. fish the pier, their, right. their son-in-law is Brian Clark, BC Surfboards, right? Like there's so much and and now they, they're living over in the, in the new um, facility, but those are just, multiple people yeah. that are uh, that are kind of going away yeah even, and it, you know yeah. the, the special part of that and i know it's not connected to surfing as much but like my mom took my three-year-old to go visit them right now yeah right like for me to be here she's like oh we're gonna go yeah. visit you know and yeah. so it's, it's just passing that kind of stuff down and yeah, yeah. We, we need that we we need to continue that so for, for sure and it doesn't need to be connected to surfing right, right. like whatever we talk about like san clemente related it is but it's funny right this yeah. family yeah, that yeah, yeah. has been here forever yeah gone to the beach love their thing it's still connected to surfing because right. it's brian clark it's yeah, bc it's, surfboards somehow like yeah. their it, oldest daughter married bc yeah and and have always been it just on the outward side of that the surfing world yeah. Right. And yeah. even once BC moved to New Zealand and they went and, you know, went somewhere else, like still came back, yeah. still here. Like he's in town right now. <laughs> yeah. I haven't heard the, 
word BC, right? In such a long time. But again, that was a staple in San Clemente growing up on yeah. the corner right there. Yeah. BC, right? Yeah. BC surf shop. Surf shop. 100% BC that and Rockies. I, that's, that's it. it. Rockies yeah. surf shop. Yeah. Rockies and BC. BC, Rockies and Stewart's, right? Yep. And those were the And three. look at the generational of Stewart's, right? Ashley yeah. and, mm. and Eric are taking over, yeah. which is amazing. Yeah. That's another guy. Bill is a legend in town. Yeah. Legend in the surf world. Yeah. Let's hear his story. Yeah. You know? Oh, he'll have a great story. Yeah. Definitely have to have Bill on. But uh, surfing, I mean, surfing, it's so, it yeah. connects everything in town. Everything. So, like, the you talk about generations. San Clemente is unique, and like, for me personally, it was football, right? So, football is what took me out of San Clemente. There was some really cool things about all the places that I got to play. Everything always brought me back to San Clemente. And I think that our generation, they have done that. Now they're starting to have kids and everyone's coming back because this is where you want to raise your kids because of all of us had such a rad childhood and want to give that to our kids. And yeah, that's kind of why I'm back and excited being back for a couple of years now. Like it's the right move. This is the best place in the world. So absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. And, and the world knows that. Look at it. They're bringing, they're bringing the WSL for the third year in a row to our backyard. Okay. Yeah. I want your world take. champ. For yeah. sure. Yeah. I want your take on like, how do you promote the city and talk yes. about the city? Like, cause I'm always in the back of my mind and maybe it's just me. Like uh, I feel guilty because it is like such a hidden gem, right? Like how many people are like, don't tell people. <laughs> sure. I'm like, it's like the, it's like like guys, the surf spot. We're not, that, we're not that powerful. Right. We can't, you know, we can't prevent people from coming here or, pro, you know, promote it enough. But right. like, so how many times do you get asked on vacation? Where are you from? Every, every, every time. time. And, I would say maybe one out of 10 times I say San Clemente. But other than that, I say Orange County or right. I say San Diego, right? Like wherever you are in the world, like I don't say San Clemente. And I don't know if that's conscious or subconscious. Sure. But it's like, they don't know where San Clemente is. No. Exactly. But they probably do. Yeah. But I always just say like, oh, we're South Orange County. Yeah, San somewhere, Diego. Somewhere in between LA and San Diego. <laughs> right. Like, <laughs> like in the middle I just think you like that. Yeah. You don't really say, oh, I'm from San Clemente when you're out in the world right. and when you're on vacation and you're traveling yeah. and yeah. Yeah, not. But I mean, now we're on the map, right? Like we're yeah. very much on the map. And yeah. so people, I guess I could start saying that, yeah. <laughs> that they yeah. know Definitely. where we are. Yeah. Definitely. So if we're going to, you know, promote it and have an influence since we are on the map, let's try to attract the type of people that we know would love the city as much as we do and love this culture and love the ocean and beach and surf. Preserve. We have to preserve it as much as possible because there is a new, there is definitely new blood coming to town. And there has been over the last 10 years, but a lot, even in my community, right? Very few people do I talk to anymore that are like, been here my whole life. A lot of people are like, just moved here five years, 10 years. Not many people are lifelong San Clemente residents, natives. But that's why, again, we go back. We're like, this is going to be hyper-local, super focused on San Clemente. Yeah. Just on San Clemente. Yeah. And Brian, yeah, and John, you have a great story, obviously. I mean, I think we're kicked off, but yeah. just to just to go in it a little bit, you were born, were you born here in San Clemente too? Or... So my parents bought the house in September of 79 and I was born in December of 79. So all my other siblings were born at San Clemente Hospital, but because of that timing, I was born up in Orange, right? Sure. Um, but yes, I came home to the house yeah. here in, in San Clemente. Lived here my whole life, um, went away to San Diego State for two years and made my way back here pretty quickly. So growing up, did you go to, were you at Concordia? Were you, what was the, what was so the So I trajectory? started yeah. Concordia as a kindergartner. Mm -hmm. um, and then we moved to OLF for one through four. And then I went back to Concordia for fifth and sixth. So she, my mom was an aide at Concordia back in 1978. And that, Miss Bassett started like a year or two before she wow. started. 40, yeah. yeah, so 43 so that was, years. Yeah, that's so insane. Rad. We were t we, she came up at the beach. We were at T Street the other day, and the Concordia family were talking about her pencils. I'm like, Mrs. Bassett <laughs> is still selling pencils? Yes. That is radical. Yeah. I did a double take, literally, because and she had like this little shoebox office, and yeah. I looked over, and it was Mrs. Bassett. Yeah. I, I seriously couldn't believe how it. How many of you draw the same wave that she taught you 100%. still today? I can picture 100%. it perfectly, dude. Absolutely. Palm trees, wave, everything. Yes. Yeah. And I was a terrible artist, so when I could finally draw <laughs> that, I was so happy, because she taught it so perfectly. Yeah. Wild. 
Yeah. But, no, seriously. No, John. but to have like, so my kids are at Concordia yeah. and we'll go to Concordia. Um, and all of Heather's siblings and my siblings all went to Concordia. Yeah. Right. And my mother-in-law taught at Concordia. So it's, yeah, I had it's, her a, too. it's a small, small community. I mean, Heather grew up in the state park, right? So like literally over, over the fence. Yeah. Um, and, and the generations that are coming through is just, yeah, yeah it's, it's pretty cool. Very, very How cool. How many kids do you have? Uh, so I have one stepson who's a freshman in high school. Okay. Um, and then a five and a half year old and a three and a half year old. Uh, five yeah. and a half girl or boy? Madeline. Or so Nate is at high school okay. and then Madeline and then Connor. Cool. Yeah. So three of them and yeah. It's best thing ever, right? Best thing ever. It's so much fun. Like the little ones and yeah. It's, having Nate even at high school is, is cool. And like, yeah. you know, he's, he's seeing what I do now and kind of that interaction and it's like, Hey, can you switch this class or can you do this? Right. Yeah. But like he has, you know, a Marcus Gardner as an algebra teacher. Right. right. Like, yep. so it's, it's, yeah, it's, it's just, it's fun. Yeah. That makes me so happy to hear. Like, again, I was just texting with Marcus too. <laughs> it's, it's like, it's so like yeah. to us normal. Right. But when you actually sit for down sure. And think so if you it, look at the high school, right, like the percentage of San Clemente graduates that are teaching there is significant. Yeah. I mean, there's five from my graduating class alone wow. that all teach at San Clemente High School. That's right so now. cool. That just and that's volumes. just it speaks volumes that you want to teach where you went to school. Yeah. And you want to stay in the community that you grew up in. Like that alone is a huge, just positive mark. Yeah. But I think that's uncommon. There's not a whole lot of towns that are yeah. having, you know, 20, 20, 30, 40% of their staff mm -hmm. also went to school there. That's, right. I don't, that is not. No. And it's not even just the teachers, it's the custodians. Right. It's the, it's the groundskeepers that yeah. like I was dealing with something the other day and the guy's like, oh yeah, I graduated here in 1980. I'm like, yeah. so cool. how did I, like, I've been here a long time. How did I not know that? Like, that's just like, he's like, oh yeah, hey, you know, I know, I know what to do. I know how to do, like, we just yeah. do the same thing. Sure. And, and keep the traditions alive. Yeah. We're invested in our community where we live. We yeah. know our neighbors. We love our, you know, we love our neighbors. We get with most of them. We yeah. get along with them. <laughs> Again, most of them. Yeah. Most of them. <laughs> most, <laughs> most of them. Yeah. But we're so lucky. So lucky. Yeah. So Concordia to Shore Cliffs. Concordia, to Shore Cliffs, St. May High School. Graduated in 1998. Yeah. Um, I'm the oldest, mm -hmm. right? And then I had a brother, Tim, that graduated in 2000 who then passed away in 04, okay. um, right after uh, being up at Berkeley. And then I have a sister who, I'm gonna get this wrong, what year she graduated, but um, I think it was 03. I think she's 03 with I think she was 03, she, she's 03 with me. And then my, I had my little brother, um, his senior year, my first year teaching. Cool. So he graduated in 06. Yeah. Uh, radical. So yeah, all, all of us went there and then, um, yeah, it was in high school. Were you surf team anything or in high school? Um, I did water polo in the beginning okay. and then sophomore year. No. And then surf team junior, senior year, Sweet. um, which with coach Hartman yeah, Hartman legend. had been there forever. He coached yeah. everything on that campus and right. been an athletic director and, and was a really special mentor, um, to me, you know, like didn't think much of it in high school. Like just, you know, had a relationship, but not super close, but close enough um went away went to san diego state got my degree in kinesiology and what was i gonna do with kinesiology sure. right like yeah. i just did it because i didn't want to work hard in college right <laughs> um and then i came back and i walked down to the pier and i was like saw coach hartman and was like what what am i doing coach like what what do i do in life he's like well i'm gonna retire in a year and a half and you have a really good shot at this and i was just like Oh, maybe that's that, a thing. That was like a dream job, right? Like yeah. that would never happen. Did the light bulb go off? Like when he said that? The light bulb went off and I was like, oh crap. Like I literally went home and and signed back up to go get my teaching credential. Right. Like signed back up, called San Diego State. Like how do I need to do this? What classes do I need? I need to have this done in a year and a half. Right. Like this needs to be completed. And so went, started that, that process um, took all the pre, like there was a couple tests I had to take and I didn't pass one of the, one of the portions and I was over in Indonesia and this was 2004. Right. So like minimal wireless, like internet, like sure. you're in an internet cafe, it's right. like dial up AOL. And I got the email that I didn't pass one of the portions and I was like, Oh, like, Oh, Shoot. uh Oh, right. Like 
okay, I got to get out of here. Like I was supposed to spend another two weeks there. And I was like, the last test is in three days. Like I got to get home. So I booked my ticket, raced home, took that third portion, passed it, yeah. and then continued um, that next year. And um, there, was, there was a bunch of people up for that, that job. Yeah. Um, I was young. I was right. 25. I had no business. Like, you know, like, but sure. I had Coach Hartman in my pocket. Right. Um, walked into that interview. It was, it was Coach Hartman, um, John Hamro, uh, the principal at the time, Hinman, Chuck Hinman, yep. and then um, Tom Godoskis. So Tom's youngest, Tanner, was going to be a senior that next year. Okay. Um, and and I walked into that interview, and you know, I was the first one to interview. I was in there for about forty five minutes. When I walked out, all three of the other candidates were all still sitting there because yeah. my interview had taken so long. Um, and it just was, it was just, it just it flowed, right. and it just felt right. And like I knew I was going to get the call the next day. Yeah. And those other three guys, the one was an assistant, the, uh, you know, Scott Finn was at Laguna. Like these guys had way better resumes than I did, but I, you know, they, I did, saw I had something. it in my, I, they saw something they ha I had it and I knew I was, I knew I was going to get the job. Right. Right. I got the call the next day and, and that's kind of where we started. And that was yeah. August, 2005. Wow. So fast forward 18 years and you guys have how many state championships, national championships. I was trying to do some, some digging. So I, you know, I thankfully a couple of years ago, I was told to like write it down, right? Because you're when you're younger, you're like, yeah. I'll remember it all. Sure. Like, don't even right. think about it, right? Um, but yeah, so it's it's one of those things. I finally put it on paper. Um, with the state championships, we had five prior to the season that I started, and since then we're at. Um, let's see, one, two, three. That's so fourteen. Rough. Fourteen. So 14 in the last eight, 18 yeah. years. That's amazing. And that's a couple COVID years. Sure. Um, and then on the on the national side, right, there was seven prior to me starting, and now we're at nine. No way. So, it, you know, we, we've we've had a very good run yeah. in that's the amazing. last I know. I have, a, I have a bunch of questions. Around I have so many. Stuff. Like, no, no, no. I have so many going Because it's like. Head. Well, first, I want to be like kids or whoever's listening. Pay attention to this story. Yeah. Like, yeah. look at this. This is a dream come true. How you got the. Like, it's just. It is fascinating and yeah. it's so interesting like you said who like in your mind who were you to get this dream job right like, right 100 I mean, like but to think it changed the trajectory of your life and now here you are developing other young kids and right. athletes and just people right that are now coming up through the same area and the same pathway that you went through and, like, and, lessons and to be surf coaching this. right back yeah. then was was wasn't really heard of like those guys were on their own they weren't doing it and it was the start of it right like there wasn't many of them out there and now right. they're they're all over the place but you knew what you wanted you were where were you indo right you knew i was you had i was in like, indonesia like, yeah like no were, i was it was may and i <laughs> i got that email thankfully i went to that internet cafe and sure. and looked at it and was like oh my gosh like i yeah. need to get home um, and so knowing that, and then, yeah, it, it fast forwarded real quick from there. Cause from that May of me being an Indo and then passing that test to the August of Tim passing away right. to then me going straight into teaching credential three weeks later. Right. What right? was that transition inheriting this successful team? Oh, like, and what coach is did like, co you know, the last several years, it was, there was a lot of world titles, right? You had the right. Godoskis brothers, you had Jason Miller, you had um, Dane Ward, right? Like yeah. all those guys had won significantly. Right. And it was like, what, what am I going to do? Yeah. Like, Let's how, lay some foundation around happen? that too, sure. right? Like how big of a culture, <clears throat> surfing culture is San Clemente? Like, again, a massive surfing culture with so leading some of the even best athletes up in the world. To that, right? Yeah. Like the NSSA nationals at lowers was was massive through the through the 90s and the early 2000s right. right like they were giving away cars in 2004 and 2005 right like so these kids that were winning these open men's titles were were being rewarded really well and if you look at the lineage and the history right like it's mike lawson started it out yep. winning in in what i think it was 99 That's what we're talking about. and then um greg long yep. won it in 2001 yep skipped grad night skipped everything to focus on that and what did that do that you know was a was a huge jumping point for him in his sure. career yep. and then the pat and then dane 
all mm-hmm. both went on to win. Yeah. Um, and then several years we've had a lot of runner ups and we've had, you know, the Griffins and those guys who have won too that didn't necessarily come through the high school program, but have been around and are yeah. there, right? right? Like even a Kolohe, right? Who is, who's been in this town and you know, you watch him come up. He didn't come through the high school program, but he's been on the peripheral, sure. right? Like he's an he's influence been, on the whole group. He's a huge influence. I mean, he's been texting me almost every day. Like how many, we got to get people down to lowers for Griffin this week. Yeah. Like we got to like, He's just trying to get everybody so fired up and positive for that. He's like, I want the entire town in the water, on the rocks, like red, like as loud as you can be. So that's radical. That's so, so just kind of, sorry, I know we're we're jumping all over the place. I love it. It's amazing. Yeah. I just, I, from a, somebody that was in a fairly established football world, what is the landscape of high school surfing? Like what is, I mean, you have to have access to the ocean, right? So th- that limits a lot of high schools. So how many like numbers and who's, who are we competing against? And like, who is, is it an East coast? Are there East coast teams when you talk about na- like national championships and like, how does all of that competition work and set up? Is it through NSSA? Like just so, kind of, can you talk on that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. NSSA is the governing body okay. um, that we kind of, that we go through. Um, there's a couple, there's another SSS one, but it, the NSSA one is the is the more prominent one. Um, the competition is is greater, um, and it's mostly co- obviously coastal schools, right? We're seeing um, San Diego, okay. um, Carlsbad, um, Huntington, Newport, Laguna, Dana, um, and then Capo Unified. All of their high schools have a program, cool. so you have a Aliso, a San Juan Hills, um, Capo Valley. Um, and then even in Huntington, right? The, the all the Huntington schools and for states and nationals, there's a lot of schools that just kind of exclude themselves because they know they're not going to compete right. well, or they only have one kid that surfs well, or two, or whatever it is, right? So they kind of just by subtraction they remove themselves. Right. So traditionally, there's like 10, 15 schools okay. um, that compete on the state side in March, and then nationals take place in June okay. and. We've been really fortunate the last several years. There's been a couple um, consistently um, New Jersey schools. So two or three, Manasquan, um, Wall, and then several four other schools as well okay. come over here. Um, and then every year there's two or three Hawaii schools cool. as well that come come out here. Um, the Kamehameha is the, the local yeah. school, puts together a program and a team. Um, they didn't come this year, but there's, there's other high schools from Hawaii that came out as well. Very cool. So yes, it it truly is a nationals, right? Like, Mm -hmm. and we might start seeing teams in Austin, Texas, right? Like pop up because of the wave pools and, and that's That's a whole nother level level inside of it. Let's hold, let's get to the wave. Well, yeah, that we'll skip that. But like, (laughs) yes, you could see it starting to kind of grow through even out the the country, right? Like people are starting to find other ways to surf, right? Like you see them surfing the rivers, you see them behind surfing boats. like behind boats, yeah. like all the, the paddleboarding stuff. Like, like it, it's yes. definitely spreading. Um, tidal, tidal bores. Like, tidal right, bores, right? right? Some of those like, videos. What Dylan Graves is doing yes. with those weird wave stuff is is pretty cool, it's right? Super like, cool. okay, I want to go to Wyoming now, yeah. right? Like, let's let's go do that. So it, it is, you know, getting out there and, and spreading. So it's cool. yeah. It's cool for the sport. You know, amazing, now that they're in yeah. the Olympics, it the exposure is getting away from just the coasts. Well, and the hope is that with the with the exposure of the Olympics and stuff, that it does help even progress the high school side of it and yeah. that level, right? Because we're not a CIF sport. Yeah. Um, we we treat it like that at the high school with academics and and being accountable and all that, right. and that comes back to John Hamro and the athletic director there. But it it isn't a CIF sport, yeah. so we're trying, you know. And is there enough push to get it there? I don't know, right? Um, most of those surf coaches are just like, oh, yeah, let's go, go to the beach every day and For enjoy sure. it. And there's nothing wrong with that at all, right? And I have multiple classes at the school that are just for that. Gotcha. But there's also the competitive side, right, right. where I have the kids that are, are competing every weekend, are going. You know, I have three right now on the USA developmental team, oh, that's good. Um, you know, going forward. Yeah. Uh, two girls or one girl and two boys this year and and consistently there's there's always you know yeah. three or four 
on that, a part of that USA developmental and, and that. And so that's another umbrella for kids to, to really come up through as well. So there's two routes you can be in your class and that is takes place at the pier Mm -hmm. or you can be part of your class. Part of being on the team is being in your class and then you go compete. Yes. In, in contests. So I I have like, we're currently in tryouts right now. My mind is going everywhere with tryouts and kids, you know, they're all great kids and they're awesome, but there's a lot of them that, yeah, they just, they don't have that competitive edge or they're, sure. they're just not quite there or whatever it is. Right. Um, and so, yeah, there, there's a competitive side to it. We do morning events, our first events next week down at barbed wires against Tesoro high school. Cool. Um, and so we go to Soro, Newport Harbor, Laguna, um, Dana Hills, Aliso. So we do morning events where it's like three of our surfers versus three of their surfers in a 15 minute heat. And so you have, so the, what's the team makeup? Like you have men, women, shortboard, longboard. Yes. So you have four, four different divisions. So there, there's three heats of men shortboard, two heats of women shortboard, and then one heat of boys longboard, and then one heat of girls longboard. Gotcha. So that's that's the makeup of it. Um, and we've pushed in recent times to get the women more involved. Right in the beginning, it was like one heat longboard shortboard whatever you want to do as long as you can stand up we're stoked on you we're now like i you know my my girls are some of the top girls in in california some of the top girls in the nation like they're absolutely pushing it and ripping and they're they're you know and if you look at the history of of uh, our team the women have been more successful than the men since i've been there in in regard to world championships Right. right where you have a Rachel Tilly who won a world longboard title. You have a, a Tori Gilkerson who won a world longboard title. Um, there's an Emmy, um, Emmy Merrill who's won multiple gold ISA gold medals, stand up paddle surfing. Killer. Now we don't have stand up paddle surfing in, in, in our competition for high school, but it was her shortboard skills on the team. And she was one of my top girls that went and, translated gotcha. onto the world stage and she went and world i think she won well, two gold yeah. medals jeff you see that with your daughter like you go down to lowers and you see dads pushing pushing these like i don't even know two-year-olds I, right like, you see these little six, these eight. little girls surf and they it's hard to get in the waves but then once they're up i'm like oh my god that girl rips <laughs> like making me look silly yeah. and i just end up sitting on the shoulder like but it's it the it's cool to see that progression on the women's side um it's rad. Yeah. That's cool. No, they shred. Yeah. How competitive is San Clemente? Are we constantly like ranking at the top number one, two against all these other schools? Too? How many how many in a row? What is it, uh, six or seven in a row? we went what was it? COVID kind of threw us off for nationals sure. just because we had to take a two year hiatus there. Um, but we'll be on our fourth in a row if we win this year. Or, or when we win this year. Let's exactly. let's, let's have a positive progression, yeah, right? Absolutely. Um, and if you look at it, I, I'm bringing everybody back from yeah. last year, um, aside from three seniors that were phenomenal, but there, there's kids that are stepping up, right? Sure. There's there's a there's a history there. There's a, a lineage that the kids want to continue yeah. in a tradition, mm-hmm. and they, they really take that seriously, right? Like with tryouts right now, I have all my seniors like, right there like they they have an investment in it knowing that they have to pass it on to that next younger generation and they want to continue that they don't want to be the one that breaks that chain or the one that that you know loses or whatever and there's nothing wrong with losing because in surfing right it you get a wave you don't get a wave like it's not it's not like a a field or 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 something like that that's set you've got nature so you could have the best surfer in the in the drop but they don't catch the wave Right. And then they what's lose. the goal of, of a lot of these kids? Like, are they looking to go pro? Like, is that all, you know, like, or and how tough is that? To, oh, right? that's so tough. If you look at even all the pros here in oh. town, like even our top level guys, minus like one or two, they're also living at home. Yeah. yeah, right. Or they're they're living in a room on a couch, right? Like they're not. Unfortunately, there's not a lot of money in the industry for that side of it. Right. Um. Very very few make real money yeah um i mean some of the top kids i have kevin schultz right high level surfer usa guy one events one qs's 
he's in the Orange County Fire Academy right now. Right. Right. Like, and he, he will be there for the next three months. Like, he yeah. kind of just disappeared off face of the earth. Yeah. yeah. Knowing that that's where he's where yeah, he's at. Sure. So yeah. yeah, the money's not there. The you know the kids want to to progress and they want to compete at those levels and and that is the goal. Yeah. Right. Like, I have one of my top seniors right now. Like, that's next year. Right. That's what he's gonna do. That's he's gonna go and trying like that's and his path gain points yeah, yeah. and qualify and stuff but this is a kid that could resume wise and everything go to a uc school next year right like smart intelligent lifeguard everything going and you for just kind of put that stuff on hold and you you know you kind of do two different paths sure. and, and that's a problem too is because they start to split their their time yeah and so they don't focus as much on one it's tricky and yeah. it's tricky right Very you're tricky. not you're not getting the support. You're not getting the money to, mm -hmm. to live that right. and to be able. So you do have to go lifeguard. You do have to go work. And and that's a that's not here, just even here. That's around the world. Yeah. yeah, yeah right. Yeah. Those guys are yeah. parking cars at night so they can go travel during the day or go travel each. So is there any issue with remaining an amateur? Like if there are prize money and things nah. because it's it not because it's not CIF. Sport? It's not a CIF sport. So that, that that's. Yeah. Not even because I mean, we were talking about the introduction of the NIL stuff with mm -hmm. getting into college and right. being able to use your name, image, likeness to make money is a the wild, wild west. I could not even imagine what it would have been like, <laughs> yeah, back when I was playing. Because who knows? Yeah, because I was yeah. you, ever all the schools you were trying to you had to skirt the line of of recruiting and all that good stuff and. Now it's just floodgates. So, I, but if if it's yeah. I, that was one of my questions. That line, was, yeah, that line, yeah. Some of the kids are getting a stipend, you know, a, a monthly stipend. Because um, yeah. I remember growing up, grew up with Andrew Gann and Michael Terrace, who yeah. were oh, top Mike, level. Michael still holds records in NSSA. And those guys, I remember them being sponsored, and that was like top shelf. If you could get sponsored, you were like so cool. And uh, I just don't know how that would that looks now. If sponsorships, so it's a, if, but if it's not, if it's a lot been of that sponsorship really. stuff is, is for most of them, it's just gear. Gotcha. And there is a little support. They, they cover contests or they cover a little bit of travel or they're getting paid 500 bucks a month or, or gotcha. something like that. It's not, not the contracts of like a, a, um, a Mellum, right. right? The Andrew Gann, Michael, right. that mm -hmm. era, um, he, yeah, he was making money where like that, that really doesn't exist right now. Yeah. I'm curious too, like what's, if you've got two surfers of equal skill set, how does one separate themselves? Is it marketability? Is it how they're able to promote? You know what I mean? Like, oh, today it's all social media stuff. Right. And that's, you know, something that you, I'm, you are, I am talking to the kids about, right? Yeah. Like yeah. just as it was coming out, there's, there was a couple really, really, high level longboarders that had some really cool like sponsorships, right? Like Pat Hubert over at rainbow was supporting this guy. And I was like, here's the deal. Like Pat's supporting you. You need to like support him back. And like right. you, there, it needs to be a reciprocation. And it, it was like a foreign concept, sure. like, right? And this kid's like, no, I just surf all day. Like, what are you talking about? Yeah. And it's like, no, you there. There's a, if this is something that you want to do, and this kid has made a career out of it now, and right. it, you know uh, his little niche in the longboard world. Um, You're like, it's, it's a business transaction. It's a business transaction, right? Pat's just not giving you sandals to give you sandals, right? right? Like sometimes he is, but yeah. at the same time, like there's something that needs to come back, right? Yeah, interesting. So, the, yeah, the social media aspect and a lot of the contracts now that the kids have, even though they're, you know, minimal pay, there are stipulations of how many times they need to post. Sure. How many times they need to tag whatever it is that that it is. Yeah. Um, and so that that is a part of the contracts now. Right. Um, kind of segue into the, my, my thought is it doesn't really matter what sport coaches have a a unique ability to keep their players motivated, right? The San Clemente surf team always year in, year out is, is in the conversation for a state and national championship. How do you keep everybody so tuned in, locked in, motivated? Like what is your, I mean, is it, is it the past, the history? Do you don't want to like the accountability kind of a thing? The what the accountability is there, the past is there, like, but just, yeah, the getting to know the kids, like, you know, having that personal relationship, like, 
that accountability side is is huge, right? Yeah. Like I always say it's it's one of those the more you surf, the more you're gonna learn what you're gonna be doing, right? You're what wave you want to catch, what wave you don't want to catch. Um and and that and you need to be in the water, yeah. right? And that comes back to like our practices and and being out there and the morning surf team, right? A lot of times it's a grind. Sure. It's cold. It's you do not want to do it, right? right. Like it's one foot slop. It's, it's why am we doing this, right? And those kids that you 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 just have that expectation, like you're going out there, like yeah. you're catching waves. Like don't don't come to me and cry that your wetsuit's wet or that sure. you know like it sucks or whatever it is. Go catch five waves. Yeah. Like go get out there and make it happen. And what happens when they come back in? They feel better. They they have a different mindset. And yeah, it's crappy, but at the same time, they feel, it's just a different. Right. positive thing um and that comes back to being in school yeah right and having a time frame we all at one point are going to have a boss and somebody telling us what to do and we're not just like doing whatever we want whenever we want um alex gray a pro up in los angeles um well known around the world right his he went to school and he's like it was one of those things that I would sit in class all day and just, I need to go get wet. I need to go get wet. I need to go get wet. As soon as school got out, didn't matter what the conditions were. He was out there. Right. And nowadays, if we're homeschooled, if we're, we're sitting around waiting for the tide to get right, waiting for the waves to come up, waiting for the, the wind to go, whatever it is. The perfect. Right? And then all of a sudden it's six o'clock and I haven't surfed yet today. Sure. And, and that happens more often than not. Where with us and, and being in class and, and having those practices and they're in the water. Yeah. And, and they're, they're, you know, they don't like it all the time, but in the end they're like, oh, that was, that was, that was helpful. That was, that was a positive thing. Yeah. No, to piggyback off of that, how important is it for the kids to be coachable? Oh, hundred percent. They have to listen. They have to have, you know, you're, you're not coaching as much technique as you are just like the mental side and, and body positioning, board positioning, wave positioning, right? What waves are you catching? Like you, in the heats of the last couple of mornings, it's like, well, I just caught the worst waves of the heat, right? Like instead of being a little bit more patient, a little sure. bit more like, hey, the, the wave's going to come to me. Having that, you know, it only takes five seconds to catch a wave, right. right? And like the last like two minutes of a heat, you start to panic. Mm-hmm. You can't panic yet, no. right? You got to keep that like the wave's going to come. I got, I'm, it's going to come. It's going to come. And that coaching of the mindset and having that positivity when you're out there is super important. Because right. as a teenager, you know, you're all head cases at right. one point, right? right. Like, Dude, you're and, all we over have, the place. and that's like, not a negative thing. It no, just it's is just, what it is. Yeah. And to keep them in a in a in the right in the right mindset sure. is important. Yeah, absolutely. And a lot of kids, I would imagine, are great at free surfing, but maybe they're not great at competing. Oh, right. I could name hundreds of kids that are like that, that you put a jersey on them. It's like a 20 pound weight. And they're like, what just happened? Right. right. What do I do? What do I do? How do I do it? It's like, you've been doing this forever. You go catch waves all the time. Right. And then you're given a time constraint and you're given, Hey, more eyes are on you. And then they freeze up. Yeah. And, and that comes back to that, that mindset and that mental, mental side. And there's a lot of really good surfers in this town that can't go out and get a result. Right. And we just, why like what's going on right they're good athletes they've competed in other you know events and sports and all of a sudden yeah. surfing is so individual it's right. it's you right it's nobody else and so you have to be you have to be comfortable within your own mind yeah. you have to be comfortable within your own like skin in right. that situation and there's a lot of you know as a teenager you're not oftentimes and so it's, it's trying to find that balance and that positivity. So, yeah. and what advice do you give the kids though? Like, like what would be some good advice right. to get your mind, you know, in the right place before a contest or, cause it is, it's hard. I know it's hard, oh, it's, but, the well, I mean, mental it, but in the same, like I'm going to compare everything to football, right? Yeah. That's all I know. Everyone's different. Oh, 100%. There, were, there were guys that were listening to hard metal that were just going nuts, hitting their head against lockers. And then there's guys <laughs> I vividly remember one of the guys first start he's listening to Katy Perry in his headphones. And I, I go, I go, Hey dude, are you listening? To, are you listening to Katy Perry? Yeah. 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 So it's, everyone's different. Yeah. You yeah. know, like as a coach though, right. What do you, what you do have you, to get to know the kids and yeah. that comes okay. back to relationships. that re- relationships yeah. Yeah, and relationships yeah. is mm-hmm. 
so important. Um, this last couple of weeks, right? I have one senior that he's won already. He's, you know, everything's positive. And this year he's kind of like, you know, I'm just going to surf for the high school and, and kind of, he's trying to go the fire route or do something different. And, but we've had like really rad conversations on the beach, right? you know, he's, and he's been a little hurt and whatever, but he's just like that, those sort of moments and sitting there and having those conversations, that's what gets those kids to like fire up when, sure. when it's right. And when it's like, Hey, like I need you right now. Like let's, let's go. And that's when they're like, Oh yeah, they, we, we can do this. Right. And so it is relationships and it is that connection. It's super important. Is there any like crossover mentorship in terms of like alumni coming back to all the time to mentor the, the guys below them, that kind of culture that you can create all the time. The, the alumni is, is, you know, when you can paddle out and you're surfing against even like an Archie, right. Who is back in the lineup. He was sure. in the lineup yesterday morning with the kids. Right. Yeah. And like, the kids just whatever you want, whatever yeah. wave you want, it's yeah. all you, right? And but they're they're watching and they're they're seeing and they're seeing his journey and his path and and learning and and growing from that. But yes, uh, the fact that we can surf with everybody is important, right? We can't go and step on the field at a football game and go, right. hey, we're gonna go practice with you know whatever team it is. That's not the case. Where they're all paddling out at lowers in the right. afternoon. Surfing with Felipe, surfing with Griffin, surfing with Kalari, Gosh, surfing with those guys. Point. Yeah. And like you're superstars there. You're superstars. Yeah. You're you're yeah. like oh, it gives me chills. Yeah. Right? Yeah, and like, totally. And you can go and that's the shortboard world. And then you go and you go to Sano and you're surfing against world champs down there. And yeah. you're you're paddling next shoulder to shoulder and and you're observing and you're watching and you're seeing Gosh, and, and you're, you know, and so San Clemente in general, because of that, really has a special place. That's cool. And like it it passes down. And those older guys get that too. Right. And they know and they want to mentor those younger yeah. kids. And they they key in on certain kids that are are doing really well. And they're like, okay, like come to yeah, yeah, come to lunch yeah, with me sure. or let's go do this. Or yeah. connecting is is I, super important. Part of the reason I love coaching my son's football team is selfishly, you learn is like so much about yourself sure. through coaching these other kids. It's so rewarding. It's amazing. It's so much fun. And then again, you know you're giving back directly to your community, right? It's like, yeah, you're coaching and you're teaching them how to surf, but at the same, same time, you're really coaching them on how to be young adults. Life oh, lessons. and if you go through like the list that I've had of kids, like mm. it gives you chills. Like, yeah. like, you know, I'm not their parent, whatever, but like, Oh, that kid's that's rad. Like, a little bit of ownership. And some pride there's in ownership. This. Like it's just like, oh, that kid's doing well. That or that kid's a doctor. Or this, sure. You know, look at the art that they created. Or like, there's a lot of cool things that are being done around and in, in the surfing world. Absolutely. And it's just like the goal is not to always be a pro surfer. Exactly. The goal is to be having a job that allows you to go get barreled around the world. Find something. Yeah, Whatever. Like, like if yeah. you want to like. Prof and it might be professional surfing sure but the goal is to go get a job that you can go get barreled around the world yeah. go be a fireman right go be a fireman <laughs> yeah. like yeah. Trust a guy me. that was in my academy he was a big wave surfer and the only reason I'm in, he was in this we were the two old guys in the academy he goes dlp the only reason i'm in this is so i can go surf and i'm like <laughs> okay you're honest with yourself like sweet dude yeah it's like i'm gonna work a bunch and then i'm gonna take off i'm gonna chase the swells right and he's like I want to be able to get to Chopu. I want to be able to get to these big waves tomorrow. Rad, dude. That's, I mean, you're dialed in, but that's, that's that culture. That's that. Oh, hundred percent. Once you've been barreled and you've surfed and you, it's addicting, <laughs> you're like, I'm going to chase it. You know, it's gnarly. My daughter who is 12 years old, literally it could be 5 AM pitch black, freezing outside, raining. It doesn't matter. She loves the sport and she loves surfing I wasn't like that growing up, so I didn't really understand it. I'm like, you really want to go right now? It's just, it's it's a different, it's a different mindset. Like she wants to, she's in a bad mood until she goes surfing and she's in a good mood. Like it's just like, that's what you, that's yeah. what you live for. So the you moment know how, you come out of a barrel, what do you want to go do again? You want to go, do, you yeah. go repeat it. But how over awesome is that, right? Like, especially yeah. us now having kids, we want our kids to find something that they're passionate about sure. right oh yeah whatever it is like find something that you enjoy doing yeah. 
Yeah. And these surfers love surfing. Yeah. They love it. Yeah. And we just, we're, we're lucky that there's a surf culture here. Yeah. You know? And, and there's, there are some guy, older guys that are doing things to preserve it because it, it it's, you can tell that it's going to take the next generation to keep, keep those stories going. The, you know, cause we, Cole Pinto, he's in the Super Bowl in two weeks, right? Right. San Clemente should show up. That'd be like having playing in your home city and you grew up in your home city. Like that doesn't happen no. in professional sports. Like that's, that's storybook. So San Clemente better show up for him. You know, like that's yes. something that needs to happen. And to hear Kolohe is the spearhead on that. Oh yeah. Bitching. Oh, it's so phenomenal. Cool. Supporting each yeah. other. Just so stoked for each other. That's what it's all about. And, you know, I hope he, I hope he kills it and just and takes it takes it home. Yeah, that'd be, I, be, I hope we give him enough space, but also enough energy to to make exactly. it happen. Exactly, because again, you can only imagine the mental space that he's in. How much pressure? How do you, again? How do you stay calm in a situation where it's the biggest moment of well, your life? Well, and everybody wants a piece of you, right? Everyone like wants a picture if you were to like, time. you got to do all these interviews. You got it, like, and he lives in a place that people drive by every day, right? right? Like, and. Is that a good like? Yeah. Is that a good or a bad thing? Right? Like, and who knows? Felipe's still in town, but people don't necessarily drive by his house every day, right? right. And so there, there's a lot of mental headspace going on in Griffin right now. And, For sure. But he's in a good space. From yeah. you know, there, there's a lot of my kids, surf kids that are you know grew up with them, friends, and Griffin just was on a different path, obviously from a very young age, but they're all around and he's got a good group of friends and a good group around That's him. That's the main thing, right? And that support system and that group is, is yeah. yeah, just protecting and, and guiding and yeah. Do those guys, since they're buddies, like those guys, Griffin was never on the, the Griffin. Ne yeah, no, he never came. So, but he's buddies with all the guys that, Oh yeah. So does, do those guys ever, do they have their own surf coach? Like, I don't know. Does he have Griffin? Yeah, Griffin's been working with different guys okay. at different venues and different places. He'll hire gotcha. um, more local kind of um, knowledge of the way experts that kind of stuff, and yeah. th those kind of things um, to help him um, at certain venues and certain. So places. what's he do yeah. here? This is his spot. <laughs> I, I don't know. I think it's probably his dad, dad, right? Yeah. I mean, Mitch from a young age. Mitch and I lifeguarded together, and yeah, I remember after school at, at ten years old, like. We luckily and fortunate had the key to lowers, right? As a lifeguard, you sure. you had that access, and um, not many people do. And so, you know, it was it was a special kind of deal that yeah. I'd pull up, and there'd be there'd be Mitch, and and the boys would be out there. So, yeah. and I would imagine too, Griffin at this level, right? So more than capable of being an unbelievable surfer, probably very honed in. On his headspace. Oh, he's locked in. Oh, locked, he's so like, locked in. Oh, you, yeah. You you walk into him. You you see him right now. He's so locked in. There's nothing you can't. Yeah, no, he it it's especially it's, what happened it's last year. Really cool to see like how focused he is. Yeah, and just how like it's it's on. Yeah, it's absolutely on. Yeah, you got to bottle that up. Like, is that's there amazing. are there waves? I mean, you can look at the 14 day. Is there waves coming? Uh, well, WSL is gonna get the curse again because it looks like there's waves right before the waiting period. I saw that, aren't it? Like three, four days before the waiting period, it'll be pumping, and then they they might. It looks like they might get something towards the end of the waiting period. Yeah, which they last year, right? They had to, they ran it on the first day, so it kind of threw off like all of their events that they had mm. through town, and like because once it was done, everybody left. Sure. Where you know they have things scheduled out, and there's there's community events and different right. things, and so if it does happen later in the waiting period, it's it's better right. for San Clemente. It's better for our you know. Los Molinos or, or sure. rip, you know, the rip All the local store. businesses, right? Yes, like, 100%. Again, look at what happened yeah. when the Super Bowl is played at SoFi Stadium up at San Diego. It's not just the stadium no. that benefits no. from it or a big concert. How many people have rented there. their houses out for the next two weeks, right? A Three weeks. A ton of people. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. The amount of businesses that thrive and benefit from this is, it's for awesome. Sure. Yeah. It's incredible. It's so so cool. you think, Griffin, if you had to, so, well, let's go through it real quick. So the top five, you've got, Again, fascinating about Ethan, right? Yeah. So you got Jack yeah. at number five, Jack oh, Robinson. Jack's, he's good. <laughs> yeah, he, he's, he's good. We were in Waco, actually, just this last year. We were going to a Texas or a wedding out in Texas, and we stopped in Waco, and Jack was surfing with one of his good buddies out there, too. 
Just um, hitting that little wedge. It was crazy. <laughs> it was amazing. Yeah. It was fascinating to watch. Like he's so good. So okay. So you got Jack. So you got Jack. At five. Then you have Joel Junka. That's who he was with. Right. Yeah. And he had a hell of a year on the WSL yeah. this year. Right. Like yeah, true. he. And the reality is, is he got the the Olympic spot over uh, over a Gabriel. No way. Okay. Right. So it's yeah. it's Philippe and Joel, and Gabriel is out on that on the Olympic spot, and right. that's that's a big thing going sure. into next year yeah. as well so yeah jack at five joel at four and then you have ethan ewing who got hurt at chopu right broke his i think l3 l4 um but he flew into town so i think he, he there who knows if he's going to give it a go or not um and then you got griffin sitting at two which i think is a, a rad spot oh, right yeah. like you get a, a you get up. a surf you get a warm up against a you know sure. someone that's coming in hot right it's not a warm-up you gotta you gotta sh perform but then you got a little bit more time once you hit fully yeah um yeah those top five oh man it's gonna oh, be fun to watch i get so excited it's gonna be fun it. yeah like what an amazing group of surfers that yeah. have right both air game turn like they have pretty much yeah. all of it oh it's gonna be and then and then on the female side right you have a carolyn marks who moved to town yeah several years ago and you know i to be honest, I, I think she's gonna to win it. Yeah. Right. Like, you have a, what are it's Caroline, mm -hmm. um, who is, who else? Katie Simmers is sitting at five, right? And then you have Molly Picklum in there, um, and then Carissa, mm -hmm. and um, oh gosh, Tyler Wright. Yeah. Right. Oh, like all, all of them. Yeah. They're, all yeah. of them. But Any I, of them can win. But I I really I I just like Carolyn's chances for sure. I'll tell you what, the best time to go down to lowers, if you want the best show ever, <laughs> go between now and when the contest <laughs> starts. Like, yeah. it's exciting. And I know even for our kids, like, to go down there and watch it, like, yeah. front row. Yeah. You get to watch these surfers perform. Yeah. It's so exciting. Oh, I see it with my kids. My kids like uh, J.O.B. and Blair Conklin, those, like, the, the catch surf guys. The catch surf guys. And they did the little foam wreckers thing at T Street a couple weeks ago, and it's like they're seeing celebrities. It's so fun to watch and oh, yeah. they get all stoked. And um, so it's the city is doing a good job of promoting the surfing because mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's twofold, right? Like having the Super Bowl in your backyard, you got to support it. And I yeah. think the city's doing a good job of, of that, you know, hopefully there's a bunch of fun events in town and yeah. Well, and if you walk the pier right now, right, they have all the, the world champs, they have uh, a whole like art exhibit, um, celebrating all the world champs cool so every name every year they won yeah. um up and down the pier which cool. you know that's yeah that's, that's a history. special thing right yeah. we're using oh, the pier yeah. we're using and they'll that's where they'll have their um kind of all the media and yeah, everything yeah, yeah. will take place out out there yeah prior absolutely. to the event i do yeah i am curious on your opinion with the wsl because it's got to be tricky to pick you have one day to pick right is this yeah. the second year they're doing this format the third the third year so you've yeah. got one day to pick, which is tricky, right? In the past, you would have two weeks of, you know, sure. on and off surfing. Yeah. How do they, you're right. So last year, they ran it on the first day. They ran it the first day. See, so they probably learned from that. Well, they well they that. learned, but they didn't have a, they didn't have have a no forecast. Option. They didn't have an option. Yeah. The rest of that forecast was, it was horrible. So they, they, right. had, they had to pull the trigger because the waves up until the start of it were pumping right. just like it's they scored right and yeah a similar thing is happening they're gonna score and then Being we'll, we'll see what the happens. end of the month like can they not just change the dates around a little bit be like hey we're gonna give it you know yeah, what no, i mean like, state, so we're gonna state go, parks won't yeah we're gonna that. go the third through the tenth like yeah no yeah not possible state parks won't let that happen uh locals won't let that happen right like yeah. there it, there's a window you get a window you have to perform within that window yeah so I did want to touch on the wave pool stuff, right? Yeah. Are you okay touching on the wave pool? Or? Sure. I haven't been there yet, but yeah. <laughs> I mean, My, yeah. I, just, I, it's just, I can only imagine the amount of, the more people it's, it's going to, it's going to tap into the whole country. You know, you have predictable conditions, waves all the time. Oh, that, the, the that's level just going to excel is, the, the, the level of surfing. It's just right. going to expedite everything. It's yeah. just like skateboarding, right? If yeah. you have the same wall and the same coping and the same yeah. barrel over and over, oh, I'm going to correct my foot this way. Sure. I'm going to put my hand here. I'm going to, all of those things, 
yeah, it's just going to make it have you, go through the roof. Do you bring in any film study? We haven't yet. Um, I have so many kids in the water, right? Like it, at practice, there's 25, right. 30 in the water. Do the, do the like guy, the top five guys, is that something? That oh they yeah. Film study. And, and you know, I, I would love to, and I need to, I need sure. to get going on that. Right. Um, I actually have a meeting this afternoon about that. Um, but to try and yeah, bring that in. And I, it's more just getting an assistant, getting someone else sure. to kind of, to do that. Spearhead that yeah. Um, cause there's, yeah, there's, there's a lot going on when we're at the beach in the morning and, sure. Um, it's hard to focus on that. But you think of wave pools like, oh, I'm working on this turn or this whatever. I'm going to do the same turn at the same time with the same wave as long as it takes. Well, that's, yeah, that's how Kevin Schultz landed his backflip, right? Yeah. Like it was yeah. the same section. Okay, I didn't get the pop on that last one. I'm going to, this is how I got to get the pop on this. Yeah. And a couple attempts and he nailed it. Yeah. Yeah, and just looking into the future of surfing, like what does that look like over the next 10 years? We've seen how much it's changed over the last 10 years. Right. What does it look like over the next 10 years? Oh, gosh. I don't know. I mean, the, you know, the wave pool is awesome, and I think it's a great training tool. Um, in the grand scheme of being a, a surfer surfer, right? Like you're, you're, chasing, sure. you're chasing that unicorn instead of that just same over and over and over so there, there's a lot of positives to those, those wave pools but then it comes so, back to like what are what are we doing this for right like why are we in this world why are we doing the surfing thing and it's the lifestyle it's the it's the chase it's sure. it's all of those things so yeah i can hop a flight and go to austin and surf 200 waves in a couple hours and sure. fill my cup or do I load the car up and I, do I go to Baja and do I chase chase a wave down there and what what's going to be more fulfilling, right? right? And you like, talked about it earlier, like, hey, the best surfer doesn't always win the heat. Like, 100%, there's, a, there's a, an X factor of nature, right? Yeah. Like, you might get skunked. There might be a 10, 15 minute lull and you get one wave. Yeah. So the wave pools make it very predictable. Absolutely. Yeah, exactly. Well, and look at Kelly's wave pool too, right? Like that is a whole different side to the Waco side, right? right. And surfing is probably phenomenal and fun and like amazing, but to watch it is a little bit more difficult, right? Because you watch it and you're like, oh, here comes the barrel section. Oh, here comes this. Here comes that. And you're like, you can predict it. And it's like, oh, who can do the sickest whatever? That's who's going to win. Right. And it's not really who gets the best wave or who gets yeah. lucky. Kind and of, and a, that's there's a, what's unique about surfing is like who gets the best wave? Who's going to position themselves? Who's going to be in that like, spot? Or who is the ocean going to pick today? Sure. Right? Like there, there's something to that, that yeah. the ocean is going to pick what's going on. Uh, that There's some spiritual energy sure. going on there. Yeah. That's why guys like us that care so much about, you know, just – like bringing that stoke and the vibe to the next generation. It's so important that we continue to push it because we see it in our kids, right? What do they want? They want instant gratification, right? Like it go, it's going towards that direction where we growing up, we wanted to take the road trip to Scorpion Bay. We wanted to chase it. And that was half the fun, right? right? The adventure and getting there yeah. was half the fun. Yeah. A flight to Texas to a perfect way. It's like, yeah, you get it. Right. And there's nothing wrong with that. No, no, no. Like it's, it's, just, uh, it's such I want to go. I just totally. haven't had the opportunity yet. But it's like just such a fine line, yeah. right? Like of how you navigate those waters to where you have a good balance of being able to enjoy both, yeah. but never losing sight of the actual adventure itself. Like that's right. the fun is the adventure. Yeah. And again, high level, like life, right? Like life lessons that you learn when you go on a road trip, right? Like oh. that you can relate it to everything you do in life. Yeah. yeah. Where the wave pool, it just, again, fun, yes, right? Is there a place for it? In my opinion, absolutely. But I just, I hope we never lose that. Well, if you think about the competitive curve. side of it, if you have a Austin team come to surf lowers, they're not going to, they, they won't be able to compete because, oh, th this is different. This right. is not generated. This is, there's a, a natural feel to this. It's like a spirituality, a connection with the water, like, they don't have that. So in terms of com competition or, or the growth of the sport, there's always going to be that kind of separation. Right. I don't, you can, it'll be really hard to marry the two. And I think they've tried and they're doing it and it's part of the tour and it's part of all that stuff. And it's fun. It's fun. Like it's a fun wrinkle, but 
you can't get away from the difference between pipeline and lowers. That's like no, no, they're so different, and you can never mimic that in a in a no. in a pool. No, never. And again, going from you know six to eight foot waves to you know two to three foot, like just yeah, yeah, yeah you can never replicate that. Um, John, I just thank you for coming. Um, you have a you've done an incredible job with the preserving the culture in town, and um, we are proud to 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 have you and, and to support everything that you're doing. And um, again, thank you for coming on here with us and on one of our first podcasts. And yeah, um, good luck the rest of the season making cuts, all that stuff. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the yeah, final yeah, roster. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, thank yeah. thank you guys for having me. I mean, it, yeah, it's special what what we do and and it, yeah, what San Clemente has. And yeah. I mean, we only scratch the surface yeah, right there's sure. so many different opportunities and and things out there and i just appreciate you guys yeah letting me sit down and, and talk for a little while absolutely and thank you for just coaching and mentoring these young kids i mean i know it means the world to all of us it's what we have to continue to do for sure yeah. shaping awesome. our future yep. appreciate you awesome <laughs> thank you guys John, you're the man thank you so much thank you for listening in join us for another episode next week coming to you from our studio on Del Mar in downtown San Clemente. Make sure you follow us on Instagram at the San Clemente podcast and subscribe to us on YouTube and Spotify so you never miss an episode.